good afternoon. Welcome to this session. Um, this is the first of many sessions called Bumper Learning Sessions. And like Danny said earlier, we're going to be every week discussing pain points for your business. So everything that, you know, could be giving you a headache, sleepless nights, things that you want to learn for your business, like you, you know, probably don't have time to go to, let's say, a webinar or a seminar or one class or the other. This is just going to be like a short one hour session every week where we just pick one thing and we address it. We, you know, dissect it and help you understand better. And today's class is going to be very practical and also very straightforward. Um, Dami, do you want me to start or do we wait for more people to join? Um, I don't think we need we need to like wait for more people. It's actually like four for so yes. We respect okay. the time of people need to early. So yes, <laughs> very true. That's that's another thing we're going to be doing on these calls. Okay, so before we start, I think it would be nice to like I said again, the size of the call is small. So let's actually get to meet ourselves. Um, do you guys want to unmute your mic? Just do small introduction. Let's even make sure that you're even listening because we can't see your face, right? So do you want to unmute your mic? Just like a quick introduction. We can start from ISOSA and then to 69 concepts and then to side stores. And just tell us what you do, you know, how your business and, and what you do. If that's fine. Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. Oh, perfect. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Okay, we can, we can start with you. Yes, hi, Evelyn. Welcome. Welcome I, to this My name is Evelyn. No, yeah. thank you very much. So, so, so what I do you do? Slide store. We oh, sell uh, kitchen, okay. kitchen wares and household items. That's what I sell. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Amazing. And, and do, you have, do you have a bumper website? Yes, I do. But though I'm I have welcome. not been selling directly on bumper websites, I mostly use it for oh, invoicing yeah. and taking my and, um, inventory. inventory. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Is there, is there a reason why? Because I feel like if you're already doing inventory, uh, just the next step is very small. I don't know why my customers customer don't there. like. My customers don't like, no matter how you put Once you put it on the yeah. um, website, then since they want to discuss with the vendor. I've tried it several times. It's only once. I think since I started using this, even when you chat me on WhatsApp, I have an option that it's available. The website, the message comes in immediately. So it's not like yeah. they are not seeing it, but they still want to chat but, on but, WhatsApp. But would you like to, you know, at some point actually be selling on, on your website more? Because I feel like I it would actually so prefer that. You. I would prefer Imagine that. that. Okay, that means, so we already have a, what, like another topic that will add to our curriculum. So one of the classes that yes. we'll take next, we'll probably bring somebody or, you know, we can take it ourselves, you know, tips that can help you actually drive your customers to this website. Because honestly, if you have a website, it's so much like less stress for you. You don't have to talk to people. So. And most people that are going to the website, they're going to buy. Mm -hmm. you know, most times on Instagram or WhatsApp, People will come, make inquiry, you will chat, chat, chat. They will not buy. I've done it before. So I know. <laughs> Maybe I don't have the money at the time or I change my mind. But if I'm going to a website, the chances are, once I see the price, I already know that ah, this one is too much for me and I'm going to bounce or I make a purchase. So another thing that we can do is like, as we're discussing like this, we're going to be you know, picking on some of the things that you may have an issue with and we can address them in like other sessions just to help us, you know, improve. So not to um, take too much of our time. I just said that she can't talk when I assume that it's a woman. Please, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the chat box. But I said that she can't talk where she is. So welcome, I It's lovely to have you here. Um, 69 Concept, do you want to do like a quick introduction yourself? I don't want to be calling you 69 concept. I want to call you by your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Shergun. Yeah. Hi, Shergun. Good afternoon. So my we name have Isosa, Shergun, and um, ah, I've forgotten. She said Evelyn. her name. Dami, do you remember? Evelyn. 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 Yes, Evelyn. Okay, so Shergun, what do you sell? Uh, souvenirs <laughs> and printing stuff. Oh, awesome. 
awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, lovely stuff, lovely stuff. We have someone else here. Hi, Majesty. Good. I thought she left. Oh no. Okay, it's fine. She can come back. So, um, just so that you know, we're not taking too much time. Again, this introduction has been lovely, and um, I, I, I think I, I didn't ask. Um, Shagun, do you also sell on your bumper website? Um, I have a challenge on that, like similar to what my sister just said now. Okay. So, yeah, like I'm bringing customers, right? To see how I can, yes, most people prefer to talk on WhatsApp, awesome. and I love them to go to the website, see the price, see the yeah. description, yeah. buy what want to buy. So that yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so thank you so much because this is like like I said earlier, it's already giving us insights into more stuff that we can share. Um I, I would really love to like, you know, speak to everybody one by one, but because of time, because like I said, these sessions are supposed to be very fast. So because of time, maybe if we have some time after, you know, the sessions, we can then do more introductions. So I'm going to quickly start. Um, I did one tiny, just small document, but it's to kind of like guide me so that I don't miss the important things that I want to share. Don't worry, it's not all those complicated PDFs that you read and you won't understand what's going on. But the good part is that you are also here. So as I'm talking, as I'm talking, you can, you know, go through what I'm saying and understand. So uh, if you can see my screen, please let me know. Yes, we can see your screen, Petra. Uh, perfect. Okay, give me a second. Let me see how to move this to present. Dami, how do I how do I do presentation? Do you know? Light show. So that it covers. Okay. Yes, light show. Awesome. Perfect. Yes, this is what I was looking for. Guys, pardon me. So today's session, like I said earlier, is going to be, you know, and that's why I ask questions on how often you use your website to sell, because this is very closely tied to your website, right? And by website now, I'm not even being specific to a bumper website. I mean websites in general. When you're talking about SEO in this form, you're talking about websites because you're talking about Google, right? You're talking about search engines. So today's topic is basically going to cover how to optimize your website product pages. Now we're specific about product pages because you know your website is large. You can have a blog. You can have um, different pages, collections on Bumper, for example, or, you know, um, category pages on other websites. But now we're talking about product pages because the Coco is actually getting these product pages to appear on Google because that's how customers find you and buy from you. So this one, let's, let's just move on. Um, welcome again. So in this class, the goal of this session is very simple. You learn the importance of optimizing your product pages and the easiest way to do it. Now, I say the easiest way because sometimes when you hear SEO, in fact, I'm, I'm going to ask, does anybody know what SEO is here? Or have you heard? You can just raise your hand up and Dami will, will let you speak. So have you heard about SEO at all? Ah, okay, slice those. This class. <laughs> okay. Slice those, you can unmute your mic. Um, SEO is search engine optimization. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you mind me asking you if you can, you know, tell me further? You've gotten the definition right, but do you know about it? Like how it works, all of that stuff. Um, I can say I know exactly how it works, but I know that if you want mm -hmm. your page or your website to be optimized, you have to use keywords that customers will be looking for. Amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. That that pretty mm -hmm. much sums it up. You, you actually have defined it in a very simple way. Okay. Dami, can we take one more person? Yes. Um. So, sister okay. nine concept. Shago. Yes. Or is it Tiara? Okay. No, Tiara is on Zoom now. Oh, yes. Shago can go first. Okay. So, um, 
SEO is search engine optimization. So it simply means mm -hmm. ranking your, your page ahead of other people using some keyword that are most yeah. likely to be asked. Yes. Am I right? Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely right. Yes. Thank you. So the one thing about SEO, and you have actually defined it in its simple form. Um, but when most times when you go online to see how to understand SEO, you start to see things like technical SEO, you start to see things like link building, you start to see things like um on page or it gets it's a lot, right? And that's not quite what you are looking for. You are just looking for how to get your like like Shegun and you know um um Slicefold has said, you're just looking for how to get your page to rank. It's that simple. You don't really want to know whether you have to learn HTML. I mean it can be that complex sometimes. So the reason why we said the easiest way to do it today is that we're breaking it down to the steps that you as a business owner can take to optimize your, so I'm not even talking, you're going to be looking for a developer that will help you to optimize. No, the things that you yourself can do. So as you're uploading your product like this now, what is the small stuff that you can do to help you rank? So that's basically what we're talking about today. Um, so moving on, that's the goal of this class. So these are some of the things that we'll discuss. Guys, I promise you, it's not a lot. It might look like it's a lot, but it's not. And again, it's very, very, very straightforward. So the basics, you know, what it means and how it works. In fact, I feel like I should skip this part because people already answered my question, right? But the basics, right? The, the key elements of the on-page SEO, and I will get to that. How to do easy keyword research. I should have put easy. Every, everywhere here because that's basically how the class is going to go. But then, you know, product descriptions, images, optimizing your bumper website, and then a case study for us to see how, you know, one of our bumper merchants has actually been doing this for their website. Mm, okay, let's continue. So this image, this simple thing that you're seeing on your screen defines what Shelvin and Slice stores have said. What is SEO? It's a set of processes aimed at improving the website's ranking in search engines. Basically, when you go online and you search, you are seeing thousands of pages, right? You are seeing thousands of pages. You could go on and on. You could go to page 100 on Google. But the trick is you don't have the time to go to page 100 on Google. Most times when you go and you search for something, after that first page, and please, this is actually a practical thing. So if I'm wrong, you can correct me. So after the first page, right, let's say, for example, you've gone to Google now to search what is SEO. You, the, the first page pops up, right? You open the first link. It's, it's not looking like it's giving you what you want. You go back, you close it, you go to the next one, right? You keep going like that. And instead of, this is practical, by the way, instead of saying, okay, let me go to page two, let me go to page three. What do you do? You tend to go back to edit what you searched. So you might be saying, you might be looking for, you might actually be looking for how to do keyword research or how to optimize your website. But you've gone to search what is SEO. It's not really giving you what you want. You now edit the keyword. You are still on that first page. Once you don't get what you're looking for on that first page, the chances that you will just edit your search is higher than going to page two, page three, page four. And now businesses know this, right? That is why the fight to be on page one is stiff. Like the fight to be on page one is serious giddy is so tough. So it's very hard to then get on page one, which is where you know the action happens. That's 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 the thing. So what takes you to page one now is the set of processes, right? That's 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 SEO. So what that that these things that you do are the things that would take you to that page one. But bear in mind, as you are doing it, other people are doing it. So you have to do it well. Now there's the why. The why is to get more organic traffic to your website. So let's break down this big English. What do we mean by organic search traffic? Um, so sometimes, right? Let me, let me use a practical example. Um, 69 Concept said that, you know, he, he doesn't get people to, people don't visit his website. So sometimes you might want to do something like, um, a promo 
right? Okay, go and buy on my website. I'll give you 20% discount just to get people to visit your website. Sometimes you might run an Instagram ad. Okay, let me send these people to my website. Let them stop bothering me in the DMs. Let them just go to the website and shop. You run an Instagram ad, right? Now, all of these things that you are doing, you are spending money, right? You are spending money. So run an Instagram ad to your website, you are spending money. When you do a sales campaign or you run a promo, you are spending money. But with SEO, you are not, right? That's, that's what it means by organic. So it just comes naturally. You know what organic means. So it comes naturally. That traffic comes because people are finding your page when they just do a random search. And that's the point of SEO. So how, how does SEO work? You fulfill user search needs in terms of relevance, content quality, and user experience. So, of course, your product is already good, right? You have a great product. Google does not know that. So you have to tell Google that this product is the best thing since sliced bread. How do you do that? Through your content, through your, you know, your product descriptions, explaining the product description in a way that Google understands that hmm, when someone searches for shoes, maybe I should give them this page. It's like this page, they know what they're doing. Um, this might be a lot. So I'm going to pause and I would, because I really need this class to be interactive. Do you guys understand this part before we continue? Or do you have questions here? Because you can just use like a reaction button or something. Just put like emoji or something if you understand so that, you know, we can continue. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, I've, I've marked your name. I'll ask you a question later. I'll get ready. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay, great. So we understand how SEO works why it is important, like why you do SEO, right? And what SEO means. Awesome. Now hold, hold that one tight. Just hold it. Let's continue. So like I said, it's a very practical class. We're going to be seeing actual, like how this thing presents, right? So the key elements of on-page of um, SEO. Remember, just very briefly in my introduction, I said something like, you know, SEO can be complicated, right? You have the technical, you have the off page, and then you have the on page. So what concerns us today is actually the on page SEO, right? When you are doing your, your when you're uploading your products, the small things that you can do to help your product page rank, that is on page SEO, right? So we're focusing on this. It doesn't mean that other things are not at play, but Let's focus on this one, right? So, so what are the key elements now of this on-page SEO? You can see here we wrote keywords, right? Like 69 Concepts and Slide Store said, people are searching for stuff, right? You are using those keywords that they're searching for to optimize your content. For example, a, a very popular one is something like, where can I buy shoes online? Where can I buy cake? What's the closest pharmacy near me? What's the closest supermarket? Those are things that people search for online. And we, we will do a test run in a bit. But those are technically keywords. And those are the kind of things that you then use to optimize your content, your product pages, your product description to help you rank when people search for these things. So also the meta title and the description, obviously, that is where the keywords go. Right. If you take a look at the image beside it, it shows you what a meta, what a what a title tag or a meta tag is, and also what a title, what a description tag is, a meta description or a description tag. So these two things are like just like the holy grail, like the most important thing for your on-page SEO, and you can do it by yourself. That's the that's, that's like what I'm trying to explain now. You need to hold that. You can do it by yourself. Every single time you upload a product, you can do this by yourself and it will help you rank. Of course, there's the content part, which is also anything you're writing is content, right? So it is, it is like a bracket statement because you could also be writing blog articles and whatnot. But even the title and the meta descriptions also are content. So. A little experiment that we did here. 
this this description, this image right here, right, is a Google. It, it ranked for certain keywords, right, on Google. Like someone searched something, and this came up, right. So looking at the image here, you can see. I think there's something blocking my screen. Can you guys see my screen perfectly well? Let me please let me know. I'm seeing yes, something that says use this to change slides. Okay, awesome. So it's just me. So, so at the bottom here, you see that we've taken a look at, we like we've dissected this image, the um, the title and the description to so find the keywords that are being used here. I don't know if that makes sense. So this this image says best home gym equipment and reviews 2020. We asked workout professionals to tell us the tell us the one piece of equipment that they would absolutely need in their home gym. Yada, 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 right? But point is, this article ranked for a keyword on best home gym equipment, on home gym or gym equipment. Does that make sense? Please, guys. More reactions. I need to know that, you know, you're understanding this plenty, plenty talk. And please, if I'm too fast, you need to let me know as well. So does, does this make sense? Do you understand the concept of keywords in your meta title and your meta description? Any reactions? Or if you have a question, this is a perfect time so that we can go back a bit. Are we good, guys? Are we good? Nobody's reacting. Are you guys still with me? They can also drop like responses in the chat session. Yes, that's true. You can drop responses in the chat box if that's also fine. Okay, so I think I saw one reaction. I'm going to assume that we can continue. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, moving on. So after you've understood what you know, what's a keyword, the role it plays in your title and your description. Now you understand the importance, you know. Like if, if we go back to this slide, um, okay, it wasn't highlighted. Actually, it was. If you go back to this slide, just pay small attention. If you look at the image, you can see equipment was highlighted, right? Home gym was highlighted because these are the keywords that are important. And these are the keywords that made this article rank. These are, these are, um, these, these are the keywords, the search terms that made this article rank. It means that Whoever found this article ranking searched for home gym equipment, best home gym equipment, like I said. So now you understand basically the, the, the importance of having keywords in your meta title and description, right? Then the next thing to learn is actually how to do keyword research, but in a very simple way. So you might hear that there are like 1,000 keyword research tools and it's true a lot of them will show you if you remember i said something about serious giddy go to get to page one so sometimes there's some keywords that you want to run for but it's just so tough it is tough because a lot of people are competing for it right like hmm, competing seriously so like sometimes you might be trying to rank for a keyword that junior is ranking for Let's leave that aside. But that keyword would be very hard, like very, very hard to rank for. So these tools help you to understand keywords that are, you know, easy, low competition, high competition, high search volume. By high search volume, we mean more people are searching for that keyword. And typically, keywords with high search volume can be very hard to rank for. So these tools actually show you all of those little things. But most of the time, they're very expensive, right? They charge you hundreds of dollars a month. And we don't have time for that. So a way that you can hack it is to actually use these things that I've, I've put here on this screen, Google Autofill, right? So when you start typing on Google, it automatically fills out something for you. And it, there's a drop down that shows you more. So if you look at this screenshot, for example, I was typing where to buy shoes. And Ovasari, shoes in Lagos, 
shoes online, shoes in bulk for resale, shoes in Port Harcourt, shoes near me. These are all keywords that people are searching for. And Google has basically offered it to me on a platter, right? Because Google knows best. But this is a fantastic way to actually find keywords without spending money on a keyword tool. And another thing, Google is just great. Another thing that Google offers you is something called related searches. So after this, the first screenshot happens at the beginning when you're typing in your search, right? This next screenshot happens after you've loaded that page. So you will see the results, one, two, three, four. And then at the bottom, you see something called related searches, right? Related searches also offers you keywords that you can use to optimize your content for free. And of course, when you then decide to go in deep, so if you now search where to buy shoes in Nigeria, you just keep seeing more and more keywords as it goes. So these are three easy ways to find, of course, there's like other, other things that you can use. And there are some tools that are kind of free to some extent. So tools like Answer the Public, right? Um, Mango, um, Keyword.io, some of these tools, can they are free to some extent and they can also help you. But like I said, if you just want quick, easy, and that's the whole point of this presentation, everything has to be easy. So if you want quick, easy, fast, these are options that you can use. Google has them for you. You can also decide to use the Google Keyword Planner itself. It's a tool by Google and it's absolutely free. All you need to do is, if you have a Google account, just search Keyword Planner, you log in, you do your keyword research, it will show you the search volume, the competition. So whether the keyword is, um, is highly competitive or if, if you know, nobody's looking for it. So you will know all of those things if you use Google um, Keyword Planner and some of those other tools. If you can afford to pay for it, so that's fine. But if you can't and you know, you just want to quickly do something, this is a perfect option for you. So once you've done your keyword research, the next thing obviously is to start implementing. So we're going to quickly run through how to write a perfect meta description. Now, for the title, I'm not going to hammer on it too much because it's a product page, which means that the title of the product page is the product. You understand? So for example, if I'm uploading on my bumper app, if I'm uploading um, pink shoes for pink, pink, I don't know, give me something. So guys, give me an example. Give me an example. You, you, are, you are the one selling products. Oh yeah, drop, drop the product names in the chat box. So give me an example. Waiting, 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 waiting. Give us examples, guys. Your products. Just drop the chat. Drop in the chat box. Give us examples of product names. Lactation supplements. Unbreakable red. Oh my god. Unbreakable red luggage set. Hmm. That is very. <laughs> Thank you. Vietnam bone straight. Oh ho. So. These are, these are products, right? And obviously, when you want to name your product page, you're going to name it Vietnam Bone Straight 32 inches, or I don't know if there's 32 inches or that, but you get my point. You're going to, Yam Pounder, you're going to name it Yam Pounder, I don't know, something. But obviously, you're going to name it to the specific product itself. So if you have different types of Yam Pounder, for example, Yam pounder, six inches, I don't know. But you have six inches, you have eight inches, you have 10 inches. These are all different products in their own right. So you're going to name it like that. So let's not really, Ken, uh, perfect. Ken would yam pounder 3000 watts. So obviously that's going to be the name of your product page. But then let's talk about the description, right? This is where small magic now happens. So how do you write a perfect meta red? Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> so how do you now write a perfect meta description? The first thing is that you need to keep it very short. So another thing you need to know is that people can actually see it. 
if we go back a little bit to this slide, right? This is actually how it appears on Google. And I'm sure you will know because you know you do Google searches. So people can see your text, which means that you, you actually have to keep it short, short enough that they can read it. Or even if they, are not, if they can't read everything, interesting enough that they will want to open the page. So it's like, um, mm, so in, in, in a movie, it's called like a cliffhanger, right? When you, you know those, I don't know, maybe if you watch The Vampire Diaries, and at the end of each episode, maybe somebody's about to turn somebody into a vampire and then they just end it. So you are eager to see what happens next. You can achieve that with your meta description. You can write a meta description in a way that someone just automatically clicks on the page. But more often than not, if you want to get the story across immediately, clickbait, thank you. If you want to get the story across immediately, you want to keep it short. So um, you can use, there, there are different tools you can use to calculate the length of your text, right? And just keep it. So this says 105 characters, but in reality, you can take it higher. It can be 120, it can be 140. It's the pixels that really matter because Google measures by the size of each character. But that's getting a bit complex. Just understand that if you're keeping it short, it's because you want to, capture everything for the person reading it to see, capture everything. If you want to keep it long, make it interesting enough that they want to open to see what's happening. The next thing obviously is to include your target keyword. Now, the great thing about product pages, like I said earlier, is every product page is unique, right? There's one thing that makes each product different. It can be Ken Wood Yam Pounder 3000 watts. It can be Ken Wood Yam Pounder 6000 watts. That's a different product page, right? So your keyword now for each page has to be unique. So you can't have two Ken Wood Yam Pounder 3000 watts pages. What, the, what, 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 what happens with that is that you don't give the opportunity for each page to rank properly. The two of them are going to be struggling to rank for one keyword and it gets very complicated. But the great thing, like I said, is with products, each product is unique. So you just keep it to each product. Make sure that your target keyword, your target keyword here, or your product pages, actually, let's, let's do a quick game. What is going to be the target keyword for a product page in general? Can anybody tell me? Who can tell me? What is, let me, let me repeat the question. What is going to be the keyword for a product page in general? So you are creating a product page. You want this product to rank. What do you think is going to be the keyword for that product page? Does anybody know? I mean, I've said it, so if you, you should catch it, like I've been saying it, does anybody know? Should I say the answer in five seconds? Five, four, three, two, one. The name of the item. So you're asking me a question, but you're supposed to be giving me an answer. <laughs> so I need you to give me with confidence. So what do you think is actually going to be <laughs> the, product, the product page? What do you think is going to be the target keyword for that product page? And um, so Rufus, not quite. Um, Frances, not quite. Okay, so because of time, Slime stars is actually right, but she was, she was asking me a question. She's supposed to be giving me an answer. The target keyword for your product pages is that product. And why is this? Simple, because people are searching for that product. Does that make sense? That's why I said this class is very easy, because the expo is already everywhere, right? And that's why we're not really focusing on creating, on, on how you should create your meta title for a product page because it's already the product name and it's already the target keyword. Now, that is why we're focusing heavily on the description, right? The description must carry that product name, right? So what you can do, because somebody said, Ken would yam pound that it's a lot, right? It's, it's a lot. So what you can do is maybe shorten it, 
but make sure that that keyword that you're trying to rank for is in your description as well. Good. Give the user what they want to see. This is this one is very straightforward because, like I said, your meta description can pull in a user, right? Your meta description can actually attract a user. I'll give you some small backstory about myself. So I used to work at Jumia and I was working in the SEO team, right? And we used to optimize um, not not product pages but category pages, and we used to optimize the title and the description. One thing we used to do then was we used to add emojis to spice it up, right? So you could see like a star emoji somewhere, just something that if you're just scrolling through, it can catch your eye very quickly, right? So we used to do that for our meta description. You just add like a tiny emoji here or there, just so that when someone is scrolling, it stands out, it's different. Now I'm not saying that you have to add an emoji, Maybe don't, but your meta description has to be intriguing enough. Again, I'm repeating this, that someone wants to click to see what you're saying. Include a call to action. So um, using Jumia again as an example, you often see at the end of your meta description, buy now, shop now. Um, yeah, buy now and shop now actually because it's an online marketplace. So it's very popular. Those are two calls actions that they would definitely use. So you, you, you probably want to do that buy now, shop now, you see 20% um, off buy now, stuff like that. So as much as you can include a meta, a call to action, right? Ensure every meta description is unique. Again, it is important because they are trying to rank each page for its uniqueness, for its target keyword. So you don't want to be repeating you don't want to be repeating your meta description. So imagine that you have, um, uh, Ken, let me use another example. Vietnam bone straight 32 inches and Vietnam bone straight 64 inches. You now make a meta description, you now copy and paste both of you just change 32 to 64. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> don't do that, right? Try as much as possible to make each one unique. And the great thing is that AI is everywhere. AI can actually help you create meta descriptions, all you need to do is just, you know, vet it to make sure that I didn't write rubbish for you, Sha. So, and, and I actually have a tool I can share with you. Just stick with me. I have good stuff. So make sure that your, your meta description is unique. And of course, include important product information. Um, so I will show you another example in the next slide. But in like, Describing your product also really helps because the, the person reading it again is so understand that meta descriptions is not just about getting your page to rank. People will also read it and you need to write like people are going to read, not like you're writing for Google. Do you understand? So make sure that important, correct information is there as well. Um, because of time, I might have to hurry a little bit. Um, so these are just simple examples. And this is actually going to be like a little test for us here in class uh, based on everything we've been saying so far. So um, the first one, the product name is Blue Velvet Pro Pillow. And the, the meta description says, elevate your home decor with our luxurious Blue Velvet Pro Pillows. Indulge in comfort and style with this exquisite accent piece for your living space. Sounds like something I want to buy. But I have a question for the class now. What is the key word in this meta description? Does anybody know? I mean, we've answered this before, but I need to know that you guys are following me. So. Let's just answer it again. So what's the key word for this meta description? And the answer is dropping in the chat box because I can see. Nice, I can see them now. Okay, okay. Awesome, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. And you guys, I, I love this class. You people are absolutely... following me. See, let me tell you, Uba Rosemary has understanding it. 
Perfect. So, ironically, you guys actually mentioned a lot of keywords, and every single one is is correct. Now, the the target keyword for the first um product here is blue velvet throw pillow. So, six nine concepts slash stores throw pillow um um commission and every other person that said throw pillow. Uh, what you're describing is a generic keyword, right? You can rank for that, but the major keyword here is a blue velvet throw pillow. Does that make sense? Because you can have a red velvet throw pillow. And if someone is looking for a blue velvet throw pillow, you want to show them this page. Does that make sense? If, you, if they're looking for a red velvet throw pillow, you want to show them that page. But if you have a category page and they're looking for throw pillows, then you want to show them a variety of all your throw pillows. Does that make sense? So that is another reason why you need to, as much as possible, take advantage of your collections on your Bumper website. So collections helps you to, you know, group your products into categories. So for example, if you have red, blue, green, purple, tropilos, you can have all of those under your collections, but each product page then has its own unique tropilo color. Does that make sense? So like Uba already said, and, and someone also said something, where to buy tropilos. Now the fantastic thing, Here's the fantastic thing about optimizing your product pages and optimizing your website, right? Google can take that, um, that's one keyword that you're optimizing for. So, so Uba said um, affordable classic leather handbags, and that is spot on. That's actually the keyword for that page. But another thing that can then happen is when someone searches for cheap classic leather handbags, your page can pop up. Why? Because what's the difference between affordable and cheap, right? They're synonyms. They mean the same thing. So when someone searches classic leather handbags, your page can pop up. When someone searches leather handbags, your page can pop up. But the thing that you want to do is focus the most on your major keyword, right? Because it narrows down the, um, what's it called now? The, the, Sales funnel, right? So if someone, let me, let me give you an example. If someone searches tropilos, right? The chances that they are just trying to see tropilos is high because there are different types of keywords. You have informational, transactional, you have navigational, and a bunch of them, right? So if someone searches tropilos, the chances that they want to see one or two tropilos is high. But if someone searches, <laughs> Blue velvet tropilo going on like this. The chances that they want to buy, they are looking for that blue velvet, that one that you are selling, eh? That's the one they are looking for, is very high. Does that make sense? So, as much as you can, like that keyword can help you run for other things regarding tropilos, leather handbags, you want to focus on that unique one you want that page to run for. And I mentioned something about a free tool, right? To help you create, um, to help you create, what's it called? Meta descriptions. So that's it here. It's called Dashboard. This link takes you directly to the tool itself. All you need to do is plug in your keyword and plug in your subject, and it will just generate multiple meta descriptions for, thank God for AI, multiple meta descriptions for you. All you then need to do is pick one, that you think is closest to what you're looking for, maybe edit it so that you're not sounding like a robot and then apply it, right? So um, moving on, how to optimize your product pages on your Bumper website. So again, this one is, is, is now very straightforward now. We don't even need to do this. But when you're uploading your products on Bumper, you have the option of, creating a title for your product page. And then you have the option of, a, if, if you're using the web app, right? You have the option of a short description and then a product description. Take advantage. See, don't ever leave it empty. Don't ever leave it empty. Your product description, no. The meta description, no. Um, the type, don't ever leave it empty. Sit down, take your time and write it well. Now, the beautiful thing about SEO is that you may think, ah, 
this thing that I'm doing now, when will you start bringing customers? You will just, you sleep in one day, one day, eh? And you wake up, you go just see your bumper up. It will just be popping up because SEO is a long-term strategy. It's so long-term that when you do it well and you start ranking, you will just see that ah, you're not doing anything wrong, and customers are coming. And you don't even know where they're coming from. They're coming from Google, right? They're coming from Google. So that is why you need to as much as make sure. On the web app, it's even better because let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's not say talking too much. I need to switch my screen real quick. So give me a second, guys. Perfect. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Oh, CEO, small testimony. Slice Stores is telling us that, you know, products that she posted years ago. And that's really how, that's really how SEO works. Sometimes it's not like instant. Sometimes it's instant. But like I said, again, remember I mentioned that some keywords are harder to rank or they take forever. Not forever, but a while. But, you know, you need to do it well because when you start reaping the benefits, you won't be able to stop. So this is the web app, right? The bumper web app. And I'm just going to just this page and we're done. Everything else you already know how to do. But you see what I'm saying here? Product name, short description. It says optional, don't leave it. <laughs> don't leave it empty. Even if it says, oh, do not leave it empty, okay? And product description also says optional, but don't leave it empty. This is where the magic happens. This is where you need to take proper advantage. Make sure that you optimize these, pa these spaces with correct content and your keyword. Okay? Thanks and God bless. And, 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 and that's really it though. That is all. Just do this. Just keep doing this. And before you know. So let's go back to this because time is not on our side. Um, I wanted to show you guys a, a quick case study. Right? So this is one bumper merchant that um, that basically ranks for everything in relation to skincare in Ibado. It is amazing. When I say, if you are just searching for skincare store in Ibado, you will always see with Miwa Beauty Store. Now, Miwa She's Beauty Store is a bumper word. Woo! Oh, look at her. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Okay, so thank God she's even here to testify. <laughs> so it's not as if, you know, we, we, we're doing anything. Miwa Beauty Store always ranks for keywords relating to skincare stores in Ibadan. And why is that? How is that, right? So this is just a simple, like I did, I just wrote small. So Miwa Beauty is an online skincare store in Ibadan, right? They also use the bumper website to sell their products online. They currently rank for keywords like online skincare stores in Ibadan. Where to buy skincare store? Where, where to buy skincare online in Ibadan? Affordable online skincare store in Ibadan. Where can I buy skincare online in Ibadan? And this is what they did. They optimized their website right from the sign up. So sometimes when you're signing up, you just want to put one or two things there and be like, I'll come back later. Don't do that, right? Don't do that. Take advantage. You put in everything as. So do the work then so that you don't have to go back because you won't go back right so do it do it well they took advantage of the about us page so the about us page I, and that me correct me if i'm wrong is on a paid plan but it is super important right that is on a paid plan Abby. yes yes i think so, Welcome so but the about us, yeah but the about us page here eh, is where you can another place where you can shine another place where you can put content about your brand. What does your brand do? Oh, we're a skincare store in Ibadan. We provide you with quality and affordable skincare. Um, what, are, what are some of the keywords that are, that, what are some of the keywords that people are looking for? Original skincare. Everybody's looking for original, because there's a lot of fake in the market, right? So everybody's looking for original skincare, quality skincare. They're looking for cheap skincare. They're looking for Korean skincare. These are keywords. You see how I'm just bringing them up? Because means I'm always looking for them. But these are keywords, right? So you use that to optimize your about us. Oh, we sell, we sell, um, let me not use skincare. Let me find something else that someone wrote. Luggage sets. So we sell um, travel sets, luggage sets, things for travel, stuff like that. You can, you can 
shop online, you know, just to get those keywords into your page. Does that make sense? So they optimize their products to help Google understand what they do. Now, Google cannot understand what you do. You have to tell it, right? You have to tell Google, this is what I do. This is, you know, through your content. So I took some screenshots of some of these things that I've talked about so that you can see as well. Now, this is a product page optimization. See, see how she just did right. She said, right phone cleanser for right cleansing. Uh, 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 you, think not, <laughs> you think I won't buy this, this phone cleanser? So actually have this, it is the right phone cleanser, guys. You think I will not buy this? Helps optimize your skin's water oil balance with rich foam. Uh, uh, thoroughly removes fine dust on skins. Contains hyaluronic acid to nourish the skin while providing moisturizing effect beautifully done right now anybody who sees this is going to be like she knows what she's doing right and on, and on the left side you also see the, this is actually me searching for i didn't search for me well i was just searching for hydrating foam cleanser and i found that stuff right so that is what seo can do for your let me not even say SEO. It's like we're complicating things. Let's say that is what optimizing your product pages can do for your brand. It's not going to be something that is like if you start today tomorrow, you start to see customers. Please let's correct that misconception, right? But when you start to see customers, come and tell us, thank you, Sha. But you understand. So this is it's just simple. Just do it as you're uploading your product, as you're updating your inventory. Do it. Take some time, maybe on a cool Saturday, and just try to see what people are searching for online. Right? Okay, so someone asked, where can we see the option of optimizing the website? Again, it's on the web app. It's also on the, on the mobile app. So on the app where you're uploading your product, you also see title and description. Take advantage of it, right? So the web app gives you a slight edge in the sense that it gives you more than a product description. It also gives you a proper meta description. But if you're using the mobile app, that's also fine. Just make sure that you don't leave that content space empty and try to also take advantage of the About Us page. All these things actually tie together to tell Google what you do for your business. Do you understand? So yes, I think that's all. Um, I think we're going to take questions now. Yeah. First of all, first of all, wait, you people understand all these things that I just said. <laughs> I hope I didn't, I hope I convinced and didn't confuse you. So do you actually, like, do you guys understand? I'm, I'm expecting responses in the chat box if you want to tell me. If not, we can just come back again next week and we'll go right again until you understand it. You must understand it, Shah. Okay, perfect. So Rufa says yes. Right. Amazing. So, okay, still digesting. Amazing. So, of course, we're going to share this with you. Thank you. Thank you, Aishwasa. We're going to share this um, recording, the, you know, the talk with you. We're going to be doing this every week. So you can come back next week with some questions if you have some, right? And we can answer those before we go into the next session. This is supposed to be where we're just breaking things down in simple ways to help you so that you can do it quick, quick. It's just simple things that you can do for your business that will not take your time or take your money. So, um, Dami, I know that was supposed to end this class at five. Well, how many questions do you think we can take? If there are any questions. We can take two or three. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. So, so if, if you people have questions, Okay, so Rufa says he'll come back next week with questions. So anybody that has any question that needs answering right now, this is this is the chance to. See, I told you that we have scholars in this class. They have questions. Scholars, amazing. Okay, so um. No questions, are we sure? Okay. That means I don't think we have questions. Oh, okay. 
I like that. So Christoph says, let me implement all Somebody these questions. Questions. We'll come back for questions if any. I like that. Okay. Okay, so apparently you can ask your question. Okay, good evening, everybody. Okay, so my question Hi. is, are we like I'm I'm trying to learn how to do um what they call it Google uh, Google ads. So I want to know if it is possible to run Google ads directly to one power website. Yes, it is. It is very possible. So, you, so your website, your bumper website is a website, right? And all you need to do is, um, when you're setting up a Google ad, you just put the link of the website, right? I think, I think it's, okay. it's that straightforward. But if you okay. want like a more detailed class on maybe how to set up a Google ad with a bumper website, we can add that to our curriculum and we will actually get Please. somebody to like yeah, explain it properly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. no, no problem. I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking note of this. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I mean, like we promised that we we're going to keep this short, so we're doing just that. Okay. I think we're good. Dummy, back to you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Petra. Oh, I oh, so sad. I to ask a question. Okay. Like when we write the product description, can we put like some keywords under it? How do you mean under it? Like maybe you describe your products, yeah? So certain mm -hmm. keywords that they'll be searching for, do we just like copy and paste okay. some of them okay. under so, it? No, you don't do that because you know why you don't do that? Because it's now, it doesn't, it doesn't look nice for people to read. Do you understand? So let me give you an yeah. example. Let's go back yeah. to this. So look at this product description, right? It says write foam cleanser. You realize foam cleanser is a keyword here, right? And the funny thing is that the way it's structured, you could actually be searching for hyaluronic acid cleanser. You could be searching for a lot of things. And that's why when you get your keywords, you tie it into legible content. Do you understand? Something that makes sense to read. When you copy and paste keywords, it's actually called keyword stopping. You are just tricking things yeah. inside just so that Google, but you don't want to do that. You understand? You still need to create yeah. your description, whatever it is, in a way that people read it and it makes sense to them. Otherwise, Google is just going to be like, oh, no, this is wrong. And you can be penalized. So, so I would advise get your keywords, stru structure it into a cohesive sentence, right? And then use that. But make sure that you have your keywords in it. But don't just copy and paste. No, no, no. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome.